It's oftentimes during our toughest moments that we really find out who our true supporters are. Former Moncton Miracle Matt Robertson always knew that Miracle Nation was his second family. But he later got confirmation when his family received the devastating news that his sister Sarah had brain cancer and only given nine months to live. Miracle Nation was definitely there. Here's Matt's story. Uh, two and a half, almost three years ago, was so my second year with the Miracles. Um, my sister, her name is Sarah Taylor, she just got married last year, but my sister Sarah um, was living in Australia and she was up for a dinner date with her now husband uh, and she passed out. And I was like, oh, you know, should we go home? And she's like, no, 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 I'm good, I'm good. Like, I'm sorry, that was weird. And about 20 minutes later, she had she fainted again. And so they called an ambulance and took her to the hospital. And uh, they did a couple scans and all that kind of thing. And they said, you have an abnormality on the left side of your head. So we'll kind of, you know, we'll do an MRI this week and see how it goes. And they were checking up on her every couple hours. And one time they checked up on her, she just didn't wake up. And so they rushed her into emergency brain surgery. Anyway, so uh, she came through that okay. And it was a stressful kind of week and a half, two week period. Um, but she had radiation, and after about two months, and she had another scan, and they said, you're cancer-free. So, um, anyway, so fast forward, you know, a year and a half or two years, and she got married, and I moved right. around Europe for four months, and she had another CT or another MRI scan, um, and they saw that it was back. And the girl said, okay, we'll come back in two weeks, and we'll see if it's grown, like how it's moving. And it had grown fairly substantially, so they gave her nine months to live and they said if you do chemotherapy we'll give you a year to live and so my parents were just like absolutely not like chemo is so rough it destroys everything your quality of life for that year for the extra three months that you would get just not worth it so uh, my mom was doing a ton of research and she found this guy in Nevada who does kind of an alternative treatment and so the deal is 100% chemotherapy well is super toxic and so it kills the cancer cells but it kills everything so this guy uses like 10% chemo, which is still harmful, but it's, it's your body's able to tolerate it. And he uses a combination of like insulin therapy and diet to kind of almost starve the cancer cells. And then when they're fully hungry and looking for food, he attacks it with a small dose of chemotherapy. You know, the Miracles reached out to me and they heard this was happening. Uh, the PR guy for the Miracles, Stuart Smith, who you, who you know, and he went to high school with my sister and heard about it through a friend. And he said, listen, I think we can really help you guys. And at first, I was a little hesitant. He said, it's like, I don't want to turn it into anything like, but I talked to my sister and she's like, listen, like, get the awareness out there. Not only is it now something really close to my heart and that it's a, uh, it's a really kind of a, a cause now that I'm become passionate. Just the community is so willing to help and and so the Miracles had a game uh, Saturday, it was November 27th or somewhere in there. And they set me up a table and people just like, Norval McConnell, who is the former um, community relations guy for the Miracles, he spoke at the start of the game and they brought out two of my teammates from the previous years, uh, Trayvon Lathan, who I played with for three years, and Stanley Robinson, who I played with for half season. And I was glad they were out there because I would have just dropped it. it was, I was messy. Yeah, I was like, yeah, yeah, yeah. you know, like I got all my tears out two years ago when my sister got sick the first time. And, and again, you know, when it happened. But I'm usually, you know, really solid. I can talk about it. But man, I just, I don't like asking for anything ever. That's just something that I really don't like to do. Emotional people, you didn't have to ask. People were just coming up with just like, just cash. And it was, anyway, so we raised almost, uh, almost $5,000 just that one night. And it was this pretty small crowd, it was 1,200 or 1,300 people, and it was so incredible. It was a, it's a really unique situation where I think we had a really symbiotic relationship early on. Like, uh, I was able to go to the Combine, they saw me at the Combine, and you know, we chatted. And Anyway, so I think that early on it really helped them to have a local face on the team, and somebody I knew, just a lot of people in the basketball community from my time coaching and playing and everything else, and they helped me by able to get my face out there in the community and work on my basketball skills, and you know, I made a little bit of money, and, and they kind of got some, some street cred in Moncton from, from having me around. And so, I mean, it was a really good opportunity kind of in that way. And so when I left, it was, you know, we parted on good terms and we had a great, you know, it was a great three years, but um, I didn't even think about it. And so when Struan contacted me and, and said, listen, we'd love to do something, I was just so happy because, you know, it's like, it was, a, you know, we had a rough road a couple of years and wins and losses and it really was just so worth it. They, they were willing to just really step outside for me 
you know, and, and that was really incredible for them to do. The, the biggest thing is she's so positive through this whole thing, and just like, anytime I have like a tinge of sadness or negativity, it just, I gotta throw that away, because it's a disservice to how strong she's being and how positive she is. It's about coming together for somebody that's in the community and is a, is a part of, of something that we're all a part of. You know, Miracles Nation is not one person, it's not 10 guys, it's 4,000 people, it's 100,000 people, right? And so, you're absolutely right. It's so much more than just about the game, and it's you know, Moncton's always been a place that's gotten behind its own, and so I'm just so thankful to to have been a part of that in the first place, and for the city to just kind of rally behind this this cause, which is again, it's just so overwhelming, man. The, the response and the amount of people that have just been so generous. It's like it's 